And now let's talk about the Red Sea crisis. India is voicing its concerns once again. This time, India's Commerce Minister has made a statement. That's Piyush Goel. He's assessing the impact of the disruptions. The full picture is yet to emerge, but the minister has shared an early assessment. These disruptions could have hit India's rice trade. Now, as you would know, India is a leading exporter of rice. It dominates 45% of the global market. Every year, India exports over 4 million tons of rice to the world. But recently, these exports were curbed. The government wanted to keep domestic prices in check. Inflation has been high, and the harvest has been below expectations this year. So India is already exporting less. And now the trade routes are disrupted. Exporters have pending orders. They have to supply rice to Europe and West Asia. The size of these orders is large, around 500,000 tons of rice. The contracts are already in place, but the challenge is transportation. How do you get it there? India has also deployed the Navy for protection. Three warships are stationed in the Arabian Sea. New Delhi has guaranteed the safety of routes. But exporters still face rising costs. When the Houthis began attacking ships, it led to logistical problems and safety concerns. Shipping companies jacked up prices. And this is playing out on different levels. The first problem is getting a ship. Some companies are not operating their ships. This includes names like Euronav, Evergreen, and Ocean Network Express. They ask their ships to avoid the Red Sea, sail to safer waters, and wait for further instructions. When the attacks began, eight out of 10 major ship owners halted operations. They refused to send their ships to the Red Sea. One of them was Maersk, a leading logistics company. Its ships have recently returned to the Red Sea. Others are yet to follow suit. So with fewer ships operating, exporters have fewer options to choose from. And this shortage is driving up costs. That's the second problem. If you're an exporter and you somehow manage to get a ship, chances are you'll be paying a premium. So the overall cost of transportation has shot up. Supply chains are in disarray. Instead of halting operations, many shipping companies chose to reroute their ships. So these, these companies are still operating, but the ship owners are taking longer routes. This takes more fuel and more time. As of Wednesday, over 300 vessels have switched routes. Earlier, they took the Red Sea route and traveled via the Suez Canal. Now they're going around Africa. So a ship going from Asia to Northern Europe will end up paying $1 million extra for fuel. That's the price for every round trip, $1 million extra. So everyone is feeling the pinch here. Even the leading retailers, the likes of Walmart, Ikea, Home Depot, and Amazon. These companies depend on supplies, supplies in China. The movement of goods has been disrupted. The supplies are scrambling. Indian exporters are in the same boat. And the inflated cost of shipping is being passed on to the consumers. Reports say rice exports from India could get more expensive. The cost of basmati rice could increase by 15 to 20 percent. What about the products that India imports, like oil? They too are vulnerable. Oil prices shot up by 2 percent this week. Last week, they rose by 3 percent. And higher oil prices will affect inflation numbers in India and elsewhere. That's how sensitive the global markets are. The longer this crisis drags on, the greater the risk to the economy. 